welcome guys welcome 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 to the youtube audience welcome to the live stream audience so basically we have built this project we are building this build with python project and uh, we are basically building this website and we have done some stuff we had built this uh, photo over here we have built the front page then if you go to courses we have built this kind of a structure we have built the database of courses and lessons and if you go to learn more uh, we have also built this uh, sections area, lessons area and now today what we are going to do is when we click on this installation button it should take us to a video page and uh, yeah that's what we'll be building today and another thing we'll be doing today is inside pricing we'll be adding a FAQ section so we'll also be doing that hello hello welcome welcome people uh, Dhruv hi WW time hello man uh, nice to see you again are you namaskar namaskar I saw your message um, so yeah, we'll be doing all this stuff. Sanjay, hey, 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 man. Nice to, nice to see you here again. Nice look. Thank you, thank you. I shaved today after a long time. So I forgot my trimmer in, uh, in forgot my trimmer, uh, trimmer in Bangalore. So I have I had to get a new one from Amazon. So I was just waiting for that. So I just kind of shaved my beard and everything. Not beard, I guess, like the mustache and everything. Got a, like a nice look, clean look. Uh, I don't like to be called sir. True, true. Yeah. Uh, Arya Namaskar, Namaskar man, IT Tamil, hi bro, hey man, hey man, nice to see you guys here. So what's been going on with you guys? How was your, how was your weekend? Like uh, basically I chilled on the weekend, played some games, had to go and get some stuff, uh, did some learning, a little bit of mine, like private learning and stuff. So yeah, I was busy with all that stuff. How was the uh, weekend of you guys? And yeah, we'll be starting in some time. Uh, basically, we'll wait for a couple of minutes and then uh, we'll start with our project. Uh, really boring, tried AI. Uh, okay, go, cool, go. Cool. I mean, AI, uh, like learning things is always like uh, a little bit uh, like boring, but once you start executing it, it's a lot of fun. Learned a, learned a new vulnerability. What kind of vulnerability, Sanjay? Curious, what kind of vulnerability you have learned? Because if you learn a new vulnerability, I'm pretty sure I know about it. Django installation class, if possible, for 10, 10 minutes in brief, sir. Uh, Django installation class? You mean like how to install Django? Like what do you mean by Django installation class? Uh, if you could be a little bit more clear uh, time, then I'll be able to help you a little bit more but right now i don't really know what you mean like help with the django installation so if you are using the uh, like uh, the pro version of django you can just go to file and then just go to new project and then you can just go to django over here and then you can just click on create after going like making a new app or something but if you are using the community version then you have to use this python console over here and in the python console then you can just google uh, like uh, django installation you have to do a lot of stuff like manually uh, in installation if you're doing using the community version so installation let me just tell you guys a little bit so basically you'll have to like pip install django um, i think this you can do with the community version also you can just go to file settings and project interpreter and then you can add stuff so you can install django man uh, like uh, like this and then like you have to write commands basically manually in order to install django inside your python console that is over here uh, creation tool hey man hey man welcome back welcome back let's go another stream yeah another stream uh, this is the seventh episodes we have done a lot of stuff so i'm really excited about this one and we are getting really really close uh python and django in pycharm in community version sir yeah i just told you about the community version you have to basically use this python console and install it like manually do all the steps like start project first you have to do just go to like the official django support over here you'll be able to see that uh, how people install it uh, like manually like first you install django by pip install django and uh, then you just go to like make steps and stuff and in order to start project you write this command start project in order to start an app you write this command start app using this manage.py file that is down below like over here so you basically write python manage.py and space start project inside your python console and that will create your project so you'll have to do this manually and then in order to create this my site app you have to write uh, python manage.py space my site inside this python console and this will create this app over here 
python and uh, let's see what is new yeah man the pre the thumbnail uh, for the previous video was op yeah i tried something new it was just like something in the moment i was like i have a clear wall i'll just click a picture of my, myself like yawning and stuff <laughs> that was pretty much it uh, let's see what is new so today what we'll be building is what we'll be doing today is uh, i've already told it but i'll tell it once again so first of all are very important when we click on this installation one it should take us to a video page so we will be working on that the second thing we i want to add in the pricing i want to add a faq section so i'll uh, also we'll also work on that and today we'll also work on the sign up uh sign up registration form so that will be pretty cool uh yeah we'll work on that and another thing that i want to add which i haven't added yet is like in lessons so you can only watch lessons if you are a paid member right but there are no preview videos so i want to make uh, like add another field to these uh, model of lessons as to like uh, like for example if we go to our models.py file over here so i want in lessons i want to add another area called preview and uh, basically i'm going to add a choice like models dot care field that choices can be like whether it can be like a preview video or not a preview video. Did you push that to GitHub? Yeah, I have finally. So if you guys want to uh, like check out the code, you can just go to GitHub dot com and go to my profile. That that is slash Atreya. Um, I think it's slash Atreya, but if I'm not wrong. And this will take you to my GitHub page, and then you can just look in repositories, and you'll be able to see the latest repository. That is this Django startup and uh, you can check out the website from here all right yeah uh, bro i have one doubt can you clear that yeah man madhwan uh, go for it go for it man i'll try my best 600 subscribers away from discord server true 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 uh, have to cre create that discord op <laughs> get a profile picture thank you thank you yeah, yeah 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 i was a little bit younger when i clicked this picture but i don't know why i like it so much uh so anyways guys let's start uh, with our uh, project so first of all what we are going to do is um, let's start with the very basics like when we click on the installation what's going to happen so I wanted to go to a, like a video just like we did with our courses page this page we, I also am going to create a video one so first of all we are going to open up our urls.py file open this baby up and I'm just going to copy this one from here so that uh, we know what's happening and inside this parse, uh, path courses and then I'm just gonna copy this and add another one of these regex thingies and instead of num just num I'm gonna add a num1 over here and instead of courses underscore detailed I'm gonna change this to lessons underscore detailed are you gonna redirect user to a page or are you gonna do something like picture in picture uh, I'm gonna redirect him to a different page where he can see uh, the video and on the left hand side we are also gonna add a navigation so that he can go to a different video quickly so lesson underscore detail and I'm going to change this name to uh, lesson underscore details and then let's create the views for it. So I'm just going to copy this, go to our views.py file and just below this courses underscore detailed. Let's create another method of uh, our lessons underscore detailed and we can basically copy this from here and instead of num we can make it num1. So this num1 will contain the value of uh, whatever has been entered over here like uh, after our course one so this is num1 over here let's put a colon over here and uh, for right now we're just gonna print out the value of num1 see if it's actually working or not and i also want to render this page somewhere so i'm gonna return uh, render maybe and uh, render a uh, course underscore details page which we haven't created yet uh, instead of passing id to urls pass slug for this you will need to include your models Hey MSA Clutch, welcome back, welcome back. Uh, I don't see so because these courses are not going to be public, so I don't see the like usefulness of making slugs. If this was like a SEO thing, I probably would have made those slugs. So we are gonna make a HTML file over here, and uh, we are just gonna call it lessons, uh, just like we did with our course underscore details. I'm just gonna call it lesson underscore details, and make a new uh, file. Uh, remember don't ask again so I'll add them manually for right now um, we'll just do all that stuff later so now I'm just gonna go to our courses underscore HTML and I'm gonna copy all the stuff that is there for right now and actually let's just copy like a simple one for right now let's go to blog.html and copy this one and oh no no not in course underscore details I wanted to copy to 
let's close all this extra stuff inside our lessons dot uh, details dot html and don't worry about this red thing that you guys are seeing over here or this blue thing this is basically like uh, the backend stuff uh, the sorry the github stuff so any files that have not been pushed to github are shown in red and that's pretty much it uh, hey mark uh, so i'm basically creating a website with using django welcome uh, thank you uh, creation for explaining it to Anyway, so yeah, this is the, so instead of our blog page, we are going to write just, this is a, this is a lesson page. All right. And then inside our, um, so yeah, this is our, let, let, let's go to our, uh, let's close this up. Let's close this up. We don't need this. Let's uh, go to our uh, lessons underscore HTML. Where is it? I probably closed it. So now what we have to do over here is, uh, wherever our lessons are so this is our lessons and this is the href tag that we want so whenever this tag is clicked basically we want to go uh, to that page so this also will have an id so what we can do is over here we can just uh, kind of write uh, uh, maybe courses slash and uh, then the course number so i'm gonna put this one so i'm gonna write course underscore object dot id so this is the course id right and then after this we are going to add our lesson id so i'm just going to put this one and add lesson dot id so over here what's going to happen is in our url so this is course one for example this we are checking out the game development course if we click on the installation one so it's going to have like an id so it's going to be like course one slash one slash one and this will open up this video page right uh this is pretty much it so if when we open this up this one uh, this one slash one should go to our urls.py file over here and this one should be returned to our use.py file over here and this num1 should be printed on our screen and we also need to render this one so let's render this i'm just gonna copy this one paste it over here right now we don't have a context so i'm just gonna leave it at that let's refresh this baby up and if you go to our lessons underscore all right this is looking good so let's actually now try it out we have at least created something uh, guitar tuner live python would be swell yeah man i guess we can create all that uh, stuff um a guitar tuner because i also play guitar but there are already a lot of tuners online i guess it's a very interesting project because you have to learn like what are the tunes what are the frequencies of different like, it will be an interesting project but it won't be a unique one so i guess what i'll do is i'll add it to my uh, like project list that we can do in the future so just give me a sec i'll uh, add it to my um project list of youtube videos that i can create and I'll, so if you guys have any ideas about the projects that i can create on python be like just you can just share it with them share it uh, with me and uh, i'll make sure that i remember them inside my notes so guitar tuner all right all right um, so what's going in the chat um are you actually going to embed a video or so what i've done is i'm using digital ocean space so actually i'm gonna show it to you guys just hold on a sec um let me see how i can show it to you guys safely without uh, like uh, showing my like personal stuff so let me just go to digitalocean.com and uh, mark appreciate it thank you thank you yeah man appreciate the ideas like i'm always open to like different ideas so i'm using uh, digital ocean for hosting my videos so i've already uploaded a couple of videos and uh, inside a database let me see if i've added those urls or not i think i i have but let me just check uh so over here i'm just gonna copy this one first let's not let's not get distracted what i'm gonna do is first let's try this one out what we were testing otherwise we are just gonna go all over the place so let's actually test this out okay uh so let's go back over here and click on an installation one and this should take us to our uh, page got an unexpected argument num let's see what the error is i'm guessing uh, the error is with this one in the urls.py file this one over here uh shouldn't give us an error lessons are going to got an unexpected argument num i guess it's this one i guess we also have to add uh, like another one inside our lessons uh, inside our views.py file because we are not accepting that num over here so let's also add that right and uh, we can also print out the num over here 
and maybe this will fix the problem you know all right now let's go back and see if it works now all right so it's working now looks good uh, this is not what we wanted is have we not changed the views name inside our urls.py file so this is lessons underscore detailed inside our views we have our lessons underscore detailed uh, oh we are basically printed out the course but as you can see it prints out the lesson number so that's fine right uh, alright so now it's we know that it's actually let's remove that num from here and just print out this one so we can make sure that num1 is only being printed so let's reload this again and only again the one is printed alright so it's working so now what we are going to do now that we have which lesson is being asked for so now we can just use this models that we have created over here again and instead of filtering them all all of them at once we are going to use this uh, objects.get which i learned is uh, when you want to get only one thing from the database you can just use this get one instead of the filter one and in, over here we are just going to write our id is equals to the num1 that we got and then we can just send a context to our course underscore details page so we are going to create a context over here and inside this we are going to put our lessons dot uh, lessons let's put a key first so and actually this is just a single lesson so not let's not put lessons so we're just going to write lesson our key name and we are going to write give it a value of uh, lesson variable over here and then put a comma and then inside this we are going to send this context to our lessons underscore details page and over here we are just going to print out uh, the lesson dot um, all right this should be working right all right maybe lesson dot title is still reloading all right lesson dot title so what we are going to do is so i'm going to show you how i uploaded videos first of all so this is my digital ocean thing and if we go to our uh, space so i've created a new space over here and over here i've uploaded a couple of videos and so i'm basically using these videos uh, like just the first three videos and you can just simply upload them and stuff and use them privately or whatever you want it's pretty easy it's kind of like amazon s3 but uh, i'm using DigitalOcean because i have a lot of uh, already like uh, money inside DigitalOcean. that's why i'm using DigitalOcean. but feel free to use amazon s3 as well uh, all right so that is what i've done now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna uh, open up my admin panel and make sure that i have added these urls over here so i'm just gonna write admin and let me open up my lessons and uh, let me just check in the installation one whether I've added it or not. So I haven't added a video URL. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this off screen for a little bit and I'm going to add the video URLs. And actually for right now, I, I think I can just make them public because I'm teaching you guys. So I think I might as well just like paste those anyways, those URLs are going to be changed. So might as well just do it in front of you guys. All right, let me just so they are they are like really really secure and stuff. All right, um, uh, use Ajax or JavaScript framework. Okay, the people are talking between themselves. React is good. Yeah, React is kind of good. All right, so what I'm gonna do is inside my build with Python. For right now, I'm just gonna use the public URL so that you guys can see what's happening behind the scenes. And so these uploaded folders will have a kind of a link. So I'm just going to copy this link from here and copy it inside my installation one, click on save. And then I'm going to do the same thing for our creating your game window. Let me just copy this one. Uh, wait, wait a sec. Did I, did I miss a lesson or something? Title logo. All right. So this is the one that we want. So let me just copy this one copy URL and go to our creating your first game window paste this URL over here and do the last one too why is it taking me to install I just want the titles URL so let's copy this one over here and again paste it inside my title logo color uh, use the video transcription service for video upload you mean like you want me to give like captions and stuff maybe man but that, that just takes a lot of time Maybe I can hire like a freelancer or something to like make tight subtitles, but then I'll also have to like hire like a technical freelance technical uh, subtitle guy because like a lot of stuff that I talk about doesn't make sense to normal people. If you don't use the uh, YouTube embed, then you will have to upload every video that you publish twice. Why? 
I mean, I'm not using the YouTube one because it's like uh, these are so. For example, let's say a person has given subscription like ten dollars per month, right? Like, if a guy already has the YouTube URL, like private YouTube URL, like why will he pay the videos uh, like subscription fee? Like he can just kind of he can sit on a single day and he can just copy the YouTube links in a text file and then he can just see these see these like watch these video whenever he wants. So the YouTube thing doesn't make sense at all. But thank you for the idea. Jitendra Kumar, hey man, hey hey, hello, send call. You can create another rat tool using Python. No man, no, no rat tools, no having stuff. All right, so this is, we have copied it inside our lessons. So now if we go over here, this should, I think, work. Or at least the title of the lessons should be printed. So let's reload this. And so let's actually change it from courses dot underscore D inside our views.py file currently our uh, this is not getting printed because we haven't changed this to lesson underscore details. All right, looking, looking good. So now we can go back over here, press on reload and uh, yeah, this is giving us the name of uh, whatever the video that we are clicking on. Let's try it again. Let's click on the creating your first game window. All right, this is working pretty good, pretty good. Let's try another one. All right, so this is working now. We just have to add a video over here. And on the left hand side, we are gonna add a navigation just with the accordion like we have done till now. Uh, so first of all, what we are gonna do is uh, let's remove this one from here. And we are gonna create a simple container. Let's do the front end part. We have already figured out the back end part. And uh, let's close this revision tag. And inside this container, we'll create another division tag and this will have a class of row and inside this baby, we are going to create another division tag and we are going to create a class of COLMD. So basically we are going to give four columns to the navigation on the left hand side and on the right hand side, we are going to add a video and maybe a comment section or discuss this uh, discussion section at the bottom. What do you guys think? Should I add the discussion section at the bottom or not? Uh, tell me in the chat. So yeah, we are going to first give it uh, four columns and then we are going to make another division tag class equals to COLMD and this we are going to give eight because it needs to add to 12 and uh, looks like you have planned everything already. Yeah, man, because uh, when I come into these streams, I realize I'm like totally unplanned. So I need to uh, like, we want discussion section. Oh yeah, yeah. Like let's create it then. Uh, but I do, uh, let's first add a video and then we'll see about the discussion. Uh, you can make Python script for creating video transcriptions. Yeah, but those video transcriptions won't be really accurate because my words are very, so for example, Django, right? When you speak Django, like uh, I, it doesn't know what Django is because the D, it, the D might be silent and then I have to like edit it all the transcript out. Yeah, so you use transcription for video security and video formatting into 360 and 720p according to internet speed. So yeah, I'll have to figure that part out. Like for example, the video that I'm going to be uploading is going to be in HD. But what about, so like, for example, like I'm going to not do 360 at all because if you're watching, watching a technical lecture, your internet speed should be at least, you should be watching in at least 720p. Otherwise you're not even going to see what's on the screen, right? So maybe I can like go between HD and non-HD. But I'll have to figure out figure that out because I'm uploading a video in HD. How to convert into non-HD? Do I have will I have to upload separate videos for non-HD and stuff? So I'll have to figure that part out. For but for right now, I'm expecting like people like who are gonna watch these video already have a very very good internet because I think these days like most of the people have like decent internet and HD videos don't take that much. So yeah, I'm gonna be uploading that directly at least for right now. And uh, yeah, later we'll see how to make these videos into different resolutions. But that's a very good idea. Uh, MSA Clutch and creation makes sense. Uh, Logical TV, hello, 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 man, hello. Please have a look at Python FFMEG streaming module for next video topic. Okay, makes sense. Uh, thank you. What I'll do is I'll add it to my to do thing. I'll see what that is. And uh, we'll. So, is it uh, what is this? Uh, you'll have to give us more information as to what it is so is it for this build with python or is it just like a project for python some kind so you'll have to give us more information msa clutch about what this python ffmpeg is is three module fun to practice i mean yeah i guess like i use it quite a lot so my mom and like my mom especially has a lot of problems sleeping so she puts on these sleep musics and stuff so i made this for her and sometimes i also use it 
is Django better than Express? Like nobody, nothing is better, man. Like depends upon what you want. So for example, I play a game like Call of Duty Mobile, and it has a lot of guns, right? Some some uh, some guns are very very quick. Some guns are have more damage in them. So every framework has something good and something bad, and you have to like see. So for example, if you play attacking in that game in Call of Duty. You'll have to like uh, maybe choose like a good SMG gun, right? Which fires very very quickly. But if you have like a, I shouldn't be talking about guns. This is like a under um, 18 plus 18 streams, like you. So I probably shouldn't be about talking about that. But anyways, yeah, like you have to depends like what kind of a developer you are. If you're good with JavaScript, go with Express, Node.js. If you want to do it with Python, I think Java is uh, Django is wonderful. Uh, FMPG streaming module is best for video transcript. Oh, that's that's uh, very good. I'll actually have a look at it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I'll put it in my Google Keep. So if you guys don't know, I use Keep uh, Google Keep for all my like reminders and notes taking. Uh, do you have any other YouTube channel? Not really. Do you guys want like a like a game uh, play uh, gameplay? So for example, I play a lot of chess. I play a lot of Call of Duty. I do a lot of like music things stuff like that do you want to like channel separately for that like just to like see what i do like weird stuff i do during the day if you guys are down for that i can create it i've been thinking about it for some time but i was like i don't know if somebody anybody even wants to watch it so yeah i saved it inside my uh, keep this fm ff uh, mpeg thing cool do you read books yeah i read a lot of books currently i'm reading this book called uh, of uh, so yeah i'll actually show it to you guys wait it should be here so this is the book uh, I don't know if you guys can see it. It's called A Man Called Oaf. It's a very emotional book. So I can see I'm only like on the fifth and something chapter and it's a very emotional book. I read a lot of books. Mahadi Momo, hi, hi. Hello, man. Sagar Sharma, obviously. Uh, obviously about what? Uh, I've created a video, a server script for transcripting videos and encrypt. This module is best. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, I want a blog channel. Okay, man. Maybe uh, if a lot of people think, I'll maybe ask in like the the community post, make a voting section, and if a lot of people want it, I'll go for it. Anyways, let's go back to it. I've read all the chat and stuff. So over here we have created the this accordion one, and let's first wo work on the video section. Uh, we'll have to add like a video. So adding a video is actually very very easy in HTML. So you just add a video tag, and uh, then you give it the width and a height. So width, I'm gonna give it 512. And we'll see whether this height and width is good enough or not. We can also increase it or decrease it depending upon what we want. And then the height is going to be 380 pixels. And then inside this, we are going to write controls because we want some controls, but I want to remove some of the controls like downloads and stuff. So I'm also going to uh, remove these uh, by writing controls uh, list equals to no download. No download. Uh, and we're gonna close this tag controls list makes uh, looks good and then we are gonna add a source over here source equals to src is kind of like an image tag and it's also a self-closing tag so we don't have to close it and then inside this we are just gonna write uh, our lesson dot the video URL and that should be good enough um, let's see how this looks so and over here we are gonna add a accordion anyway so let's leave it at empty for right now and let's see how it looks all right so we are also need to add probably like an mx auto or something and this is not loading i don't know why oh because this is the seventh lecture we want to go with the with the first three lectures because i've only added the urls for those first three so over here our video is there so for example i'm just gonna play this all one. right guys welcome to this python game development video series and we'll be using the famous spy game library of python to create all right, so this actually looks pretty good, right? Obviously the transcription thing is not there, but this looks pretty good. So this video is gonna be somewhere in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this mx-auto over here, and this should put this in the middle somewhere, right? Or not. I guess we can just make it a little bit bigger, I guess. Uh, so can we just remove the width and height and it should, it can take this automatically let's see oh it gives it me oh <laughs> okay this is too big <laughs> so let's actually give it a width and height but i guess we'll increase the width and height to like maybe width can be uh maybe 720 right and the height can be like maybe 420 i don't know these aspect ratios i'm just i'm just throwing out random numbers 
All right, this actually looks decent enough for a video height and width. Uh, and then let's on the left hand side, let's add like a navigation bar or something, right? And we also want this to have like some kind of a height. So I'm just gonna add MY-4 for a width margin from the top, I guess. Yeah, a little bit of margin looks good. And then on the left hand side, we are gonna add an accordion that we have already added inside our courses underscore details, right? So we can uh, probably just copy this one for a section, this one, accordion, this is the div tag that we want. And where is this div tag ending? Yeah, so this is this is all, all, all of this stuff we want, right? So this tag is ending over here. So let's just copy this one. All right, let me just yoink it from our course underscore details and paste it inside our uh, over here, let's format everything properly. Obviously, we inside our views.py file, we also will have to send these courses and lessons, which we haven't yet. So let me just copy all of these three and paste them over here. And uh, inside our context, we'll also have to add them. So I'm just gonna copy these from here and also paste them here. All right. And I guess we'll have to change uh, this variable, right? So we'll just write current underscore lesson. And inside our lessons underscore HTML, we are gonna go uh, with current underscore lesson dot video URL. And the rest of the stuff should be like the same, I think so. So let's go and reload this and see how it looks. Hopefully it should work or not work. All right, this, so this is what we want, right? Uh, what I, another thing about what I want to do is make them, make this into kind of a list. So currently this is not a list, right? Uh, so for example, if we click on the, this, uh, for example, if we click on creating your first game window, the video opens up, but you don't know which uh, title has been selected. If we create a list, instead of adding these lead tags, then we can actually like color them differently, right? And that will be pretty good. Let's say what's going on inside the chat. Um, uh, about creating the second channel. Oh, that makes sense. Sagar. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe I will. Hi, sir. I love your channel. Thank you. Prathamesh. Thank you. Thank you. Video on the right or video on the left. I think on the right hand side, it looks good. Uh, bro, please make a normal pie charm live session, which you can do challenges of making programs that also makes sense. Like do viewer challenges, right? Like whatever, but you know, the uh, bad thing is the chat will always be asking me to make, make, make a social network and these things can't be done in like a one session. And I can only probably choose like one or two projects to work on live because they take a lot of time. Will you make more game making tutorials? Yeah, obviously I will. Use all tab, you navigate between window that will save you some time. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, all right. Ranjan, hey man, hi man, how are you? All right, so we have this. Now let's also add like a title maybe below as to what the video is or should we? Um, maybe we can add a title at the top or something. Uh, let's see if we have any interesting bootstrap uh, resources to add a title. Oh, it's, I think it's get bootstrap, not bootstrap.com. Get bootstrap.com. And let's see if we have anything interesting uh, for the titles inside our components. Uh, should we just display it as an alert? Maybe we can just display it as a simple alert, I guess, right? So we can just copy this from here and we are going to just paste it maybe over here somewhere, format it. And instead of this, we can just write an H2 tag. Please don't tell me I'll have to create another row over here. Uh, yeah, I think I'll have to create another row, I guess, right? But anyways, let's give it a shot. We are just going to write current uh, lesson dot our uh, title and I think I'll have to create another row because this is not gonna work oh it's working perfect creating your first game window maybe like a different one <laughs> this is just too light I can't even see it uh, maybe a different one let's see let's see um, maybe this one this this blue one this info instead of the light Info, info, info. Let's see how that looks. Ah, it doesn't look good. 
so i think we'll uh, we'll have to see so this is this is just the designing part so i think i might as well like um, do it a little bit later because i'll have to see what looks good and this is just design part yeah so for right now what we are going to do is i'm not going to use these complex things i'm just going to give a simple h2 tag and be done with it and later we can change it so for example uh, what i've done if you guys haven't noticed uh like like behind the scenes what i've done is uh over here as you can see in the photo it's a little bit lighter color which i liked a little bit more and what i've done is i've added the link so for example if i click on instagram it's going to open up in a new tab so if you guys don't know how to do that so when you click on the icon it opens up in a new tab you basically uh, let me just go to my um, base.html uh, let's go to our base.html where is our base.html inside our footer over here you just basically add a class of target underscore blank and when you click on it it just basically opens in a new tab and what i've also done is i've added a my dash auto so that this these icons appear in the center of our uh, footer basically which wasn't there in the last uh, live stream so yeah what i'll do is uh, so we'll do this later because i think this is just like an extra thing so what we'll do is we'll make these things into a list so i'll, I'll add them inside my to do list right so we'll add a um, accordion actually we are going to add accordion on uh, courses and uh, lesson detail page should have a list not according accordion all right we'll work this on this a little bit later and now this just below this we'll add a comment section but what what uh, because this comment section will require user authentication uh so i'm just going to skip it to later and i'm just going to add it inside my to do list to um add a discussion disc what's the spelling of discussion i'm just blanking out on it uh, i don't think the spelling is correct discussion uh oh, okay let me actually google the spelling <laughs> i'm messing up the spelling of this discussion see when i write it like this on google it always comes out correct and then uh, I don't know why over here it always comes out wrong. Add a discussion on uh, the lesson underscore detail page. So this will be done after user authentication because in comments we need to add who commented and stuff like that. So we need to add it. Uh, yeah, Jaiswal, this is Bichin. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Ashish Vandari, hey bro, hey man, hey man, welcome, welcome. So yeah, we have created this part, creating our first game window, and below this, we are just going to add a comment section. And uh, what we are also going to do is we are going to convert this into a list. What I also want to do in this video is inside our pricing one, I want to add an accordion below this to create a FAQ section. So for example, if you look at the tutorials point website, right, which we have been trying to like kind of replicate. So if you go to the tutorial point uh, website and open this baby up. uh and uh, we open up not this one we want we want to just click on check it now no let's go back and we click on check it now you can see they also have a faq section which makes a lot of sense so they have this faq section which makes a lot of sense and they have this like big accordion uh below this so i also want to create this the data inside this is going to be added later like in the like off stream but for uh, like over here i just want to add a accordion inside our pricing page So what I'm going to do is let's close my LinkedIn we don't need this yeah let's so we'll, what we're going to do is inside our um, we don't need this so we have completed our video details page all right so now we are going to just work on the pricing for a little bit and then we'll do the sign up thing bro how to get pycham ki uh, i don't know man you need to like i bought it so all right uh, no illegal stuff here All right. What is this? Zoom transition transform. Zoom hover transform. What is what? Is, use this code for cards. Uh, hashtag zoom transition transform. Hashtag. Uh, I think uh, what you can do is you can message me this code. I'm not gonna add it right now because that's just extra stuff. But you can just message me this code and maybe I'll add it later. So right now we are just gonna work on the pricing thing. 
No, I guess we can use it. Creation dual. I think we can use it. I guess what he's trying to do is make it a little bit better, like add some transitions and stuff and make it a little bit look cooler. But I think we are just like not working on design right now. We are going to work on the design like at the last. So then I'll be able to use this code. So if you message me, I'll be able to save it somewhere. All right. So what I'm going to do is, uh, Ashish, uh, are you a student? No, I'm not a student, man. I'm 25, but I'm the student of Python. That's true. <laughs> so anyways, let's go back and yeah, let's, let, we are just going off topic all the time in this stream, which is not good. All right. But I think it's also cool to like, look at what people are messaging and stuff, right? Or should we try out the zoom thing? Uh, I guess we can try out the zoom thing. I'm, I'm curious as to what it does. And let me say clutch always gives like good, uh, so I guess we can just try it on one card and see what it does. And if we like it, we can do it more. So where is the card that we have used? We have used a card over here, right? Nah, it will take too much time. Can we add a style, just a style tag over here? Like, um, mm, yeah, if you're a student, you can get PyCharm for free. That's true. All right, we'll do this later, man. The Zoom thing. Let's add the accordion first. All right, so we are going to open up our pricing page. Let's not get distracted. Uh, Pricing.html. And inside this, uh, what we are going to do is, uh, yeah, we are going to add an accordion. So we have our uh, this row over here. Now we can just add another row over here because we want this area to be in another row. And then we can just call it a row again. And inside this, we are also gonna give it a div tag or a class equals to, and we are just gonna give it uh, like all the width it needs. So I'm just gonna give it 12. And then we are just gonna add an accordion over here. And let's go and look at the accordion code again. So I think it's pause and collapse. Yes, you can add a style tag. All right, I, I, let's see if we, if, let's just complete this pricing thing first and then I'll go back to like your zoom thing. All right, so accordion example is here. So we need to just copy this thing and, um, and actually we can do this manually, right? Because I don't think there'll be like a lot of changes on this one. So we, I think we can just do this manually, right? And uh, let's see how it looks. Uh, yeah, so we want them to be closed. Why is the first one open? So let's check that out. Area expanded is true. Collapsed. Group item collapsed. Area expanded equals to false. All right, so I think the difference is that there's this collapsed uh, class that is added. So I'm gonna also add this one over here and I'm gonna make this as false as well so now let's get back and see how it looks now it's still opening i don't know why so what we can do i guess is that we can just because i don't want to wait what's happening where is the accordion yeah this is the accordion one right so what we can do is i guess so this is collapse one right so what we can do is uh, i'm again gonna take like a like a shortcut and I'm gonna copy all of this from here, right? Copy this from here. And because I just don't want to find out what's wrong and what's not wrong over there, I'm gonna paste this here. I'm gonna format this baby up and I'm gonna change our, uh, where is it? Let's format everything properly. And instead of collapse two, I'm gonna change this to one everywhere. Copy and paste this here. Collapsed, collapsed one. Perfect. Uh, heading one, not two. All right. And uh, also this should be one. This should be one. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, I guess. So this should work. This should be closed now, I guess. All right, so this is closed. Looks good. And now we need obviously like a margin or something at the top. Uh, so let's go back to the top and we can add like a my dash four and reload this baby up and this should give us a little bit of a margin, but I guess we want like a little bit of more margin. So let's give it a value of eight. 
yeah that's not gonna work i think it has only like specific values and i don't want to go into it right now so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna give it a simple style style tag and i'm gonna just manually give it a margin top of like maybe 10 percent let's reload uh yeah actually i like this one but instead of 10 percent maybe just give it like eight uh, percent yeah and for right now i'm not gonna add anything over here what we are gonna do is uh can we just copy this uh not really we can just i guess go to inspect I'm, I'm so lazy like sometimes i feel like i'm so lazy like um like copying pasting stuff so all right let me just so just to copy this from here i, I like use this inspected element but anyways um so yeah i'm just gonna paste this baby over here and i'm gonna kind of do it for um all the items for right now yeah so i'm gonna add stuff to this later but i think for right now it looks good and we also need to add like some kind of a heading right um, yeah what you need to mention what this is too because we haven't added uh, frequently asked questions add some margin on the x2 let's see oh yeah this is not inside a container what's happening Oh, this is a container fluid. Why is this a container fluid? I don't get it. This should be like just a container, right? Why is this a container fluid? Yeah, this should be a container. I guess this became small, so we can just increase the size a little bit of our card in the middle. Yeah. All right. So this looks good. And now we just need to add a FAQ at the top so we can i guess just just add a simple h2 tag or maybe h1 tag and we can just try it uh frequently asked questions uh let's close this one up and let's copy this from here and paste it over here and uh let's reload this nope 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 nope, nope. <laughs> do we need to add uh okay so i'm adding it at a wrong place I need to add this over here somewhere. So maybe just inside this. Do I need to create a new row for this? Frequently asked questions. I guess it's fine. Well, actually, let's maybe uh, just create a new row for it, I guess. In. All right, a lot of people have awesome stuff. I use Golang and PyCharm Pro. I'm 100% sure that GitHub students will get you PHP not for free. If you are a student anywhere in the world, if you, even if you are in college, you can get like PyCharm for free, like professional version. You just need, uh, just write PyCharm student pro on Google and you'll be able to get it. You need to enable clipboard history. It's very useful. Okay, I'll keep in mind when I run this, I get error. Username dot builder or is just like a key, key thing, man. Uh, maybe like ask me, on email or on Instagram. Do you know Hindi? Yeah, yeah, bhai, aati hai. Uh, creation dual in visual studio code. Okay, I don't need it. Oh, she has been going tabs into space. You are saying that it's an intendation error. Oh yeah, it's actually an intendation error. Tab error in constant use of tabs and spaces. Yeah, it's an intent. You're not giving spaces correctly in Python. So you just maybe like what he's saying. If you're using uh, PyCharm, you can just press control, alt and L. All right, hi, I'm back, Jitin Kumar. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so we need to add this frequently asked questions. So I guess what we can, can we just do style? Sorry, can we just add a class over here and give it a text dash center? And this should center this text in the middle of our screen, right? All right, and then we need to just give it a little bit of margin at the bottom. So maybe my uh, dash two. I'm just trying to like see if it works. Nah, so I need to just give it a margin. Um, so let's edit this part out and give it a style margin bottom and it just give it a 2% maybe. Right? Yeah, so all right, so this looks good. We later add more FAQ stuff over here. Let's look at our thing. All right, so this is this is looking good. We just need to change the style, I guess, of these uh, accordions. And this is again into like uh, the styling part. So we are gonna do this later. By the way, do you guys have any questions about the subscription packages that I can add to FAQ? If you guys have any questions, you can just ask in the chat. And if it's reasonable, like if the question that you're asking is actually reasonable, I'll add it over here in the FAQ section also. 
आयुष पाटिल सॉरी आई एम लेट बिकॉज आई एम वर्किंग ऑन ब्लॉगिंग साइड वेलकम वेलकम आयुष वेलकम माधव माधव मलिक हेलो हेलो वेलकम ब्रो अभिषेक हेलो फ्रॉम नेपाल हेलो हेलो मैम कैन यू मेक अ न्यू अपडेटेड वीडियो ऑफ डिप्लॉमेंट ऑफ जैंगो विद हिरोगू एक्चुअली दैट वीडियो इज स्टिल वैलिड एंड वॉट वी आर गोन डू इज दैट वी आर गोन दिस टाइम अपलोड आर वीडियोज टू डिजिटल सॉरी आर वेबसाइट टू डिजिटल ओशन सो दैट इज गोन बी रियली इंटरेस्टिंग एंड इज माई लैपटॉप चार्जिंग नीड टू अपडेट माई वी विंडो या इज चार्जिंग I voted for pricing page in the previous team because I thought you would do that actual payment. Oh, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> no, the payment thing we are gonna do uh, after sign up and uh, login because before that it doesn't make sense the white the pricing thing. Is it auto charge next month? Yeah, it is unless you cancel it from over here and or you can cancel it uh, from the PayPal. I think I'll be adding PayPal to it, but we'll see what uh, things we can add. Stripe, maybe Stripe payments. We'll have to like research it a little bit. All right. So the auto payment thing is, I think everybody auto does it, auto recharges it, like even Netflix. So I don't think like it makes sense for me to like not do it auto charged. But I think that's a very good question. I'll I'll uh, definitely add it inside my. I'll just copy it, and I'll gonna I'm gonna add it to my uh, things to remember. All right. Thank you, thank you, uh, Madhav. Thank you, thank you for the question. You need to add middle way too, right? For what? For the pricing thing, maybe. Do refund policy FAQ. I think we just definitely need to add the refund policy in FAQ. Thank you. Uh, I'll add it. I'll add it. I'll add it. I mean, if there is a refund policy, I'll think if there should be a refund policy or not. Because what we are gonna do is inside our courses. we are going to have some preview lectures so some of the lectures are free to watch and if you like the style of teaching then you can just enroll in it and the price is not that much so it doesn't make sense to do a refund policy thing you can also try cash free what is that how long do you stay in front of the screen i stay a long long time i am surprised that i haven't gotten like a spectacles yet on my eyes uh but anyways guys so we have created this pricing thing looks good so now we are going to do the sign up thing which i think a lot of people have been voting for have been waiting for so for right now what we are going to do is we are just going to add a sign up page so for example if you go to this url and dash sign up are you using two computers i'm using two one extra monitor i'm not using two computers i'm just using a uh, like an extra monitor cash free payment gateway uh yeah i guess we i can we can check it out when we when we are doing the payments thing then you can remind me All right, so we are going to make the sign up page. So what I'm going to do is inside again, uh, let's close all the stuff up. We don't need it for right now. So we are going to go to our URLs dot py file, and I'm going to add like we'll soup <laughs> refund policy FAQ, dude. What is the spelling of dude by the way? <laughs> all right, uh, so we need to add uh, the sign up thing, right? So I'm just going to copy one of these things from here and paste them here. Sign up doesn't sound right for uh, in the URL. Use register. No, I think it sounds right, man. I don't think there's a problem for it, with it. So inside uh, this, we are just gonna use our sign up views dot sign up, and I'm also gonna write uh, its name as sign up. And over here in the path, we are also gonna write uh, sign up. And probably most of the times, people are not gonna go to this page. I'm just creating it for right now. So normally, what I'm gonna do is when somebody goes to like a maybe like a course or something, and after he watches those uh, preview lectures, yeah, we'll have to first create this. But anyway, then he goes to one of the videos. Oh, he uh, Pahul uh, Preet, please don't spam. And yeah, I think he deleted it anyways on his own, so it's fine. doing great keep on man can we uh, sts pros can we uh, can we change django website in android app don't say skip i did yeah i guess you can just make a, like a like when you create a website for mobile then you can use the android's web view kind of a thing in android and uh, you can just simply uh, use the web view version to display the mobile website i think that's the simplest way to create a mobile app for your website anyway so this is the views dot sign up and inside our views we are going to create our sign up page so let's create this uh, blog let's create it at the bottom so we are going to go dev sign up and guys i'll be just focusing on uh, like the code from now on so uh, 
I won't be looking at the chat that much, right? So yeah, we are gonna go to our sign up and over here we are gonna write our request over here. And I'm gonna be looking at the chat in a couple of minutes. So let's just complete this sign up thing first. So first of all, in this one, what I'm gonna do is, for right now, I'm just gonna write pass. So what we're gonna do over here is first, like, we, let's create the form for the sign up. What is gonna require, like the username, the email, and the password one as the password too. I think those are the basic things required for a sign up. So what I'm gonna do is this time we are gonna create a sign uh, forms using the forms.py file and we are gonna use the sign up functionality that Django has inside built, like it's built inside Django. We are gonna use that uh, sign up functionality. It's called user creation forms. So we are gonna use that functionality so that we don't have to do everything from scratch and use the actual Django functionality, right? So just inside, like uh, like we always do, like inside our Maya, we are gonna create a new uh, Python file this time, and we are gonna call it forms. And you have to call this forms as forms.py, otherwise it's not gonna work. So inside our app, we are gonna create this forms.py, and over here, we are just gonna create a form manually. So first, what we are gonna do is, um, let's see. So first of all, we need to create the form, right? And we need to first import our user creation form, right? So first uh, we are just gonna import forms from Django, I guess, from Django import forms, right? So now we have imported all kinds of form, including the user creation form and stuff. So we'll also have, actually let's look at how to create a user creation because I don't think I remember. So let me actually go and check it out. So let's write user creation form Django and let's look at the official documentation. Yeah, I guess. Uh, let's look at some stack, stack overflow and see how it works. Whew. Dude, make custom Django user model. Uh, I'm thinking I'm just gonna be using the custom, uh, the model that Let's go to, why are we going to our dev version? I don't know, let's go to 3.1 maybe. Oh, this is just the source code. We don't even need it. Uh, so yeah, we create this user ordinal, then we import the models, the user, and we just basically create this. Yeah, yeah, I think it's pretty simple. It's pretty, um, yeah, I think it's pretty simple. I think I remember it a little bit, so I think, I don't think it, it should be a problem. So first of all, we are basically gonna import our uh, user creation form. So I'm just gonna write from Django dot contrib, right? And dot uh, auth dot forms and import the user creation form. Should be user creation form. And then we also need to import the models of the user so that we can create like actual user, like what is uh, like model fields basically, like username, email and stuff. For that we need to use an inbuilt model model of the user otherwise we'll have to use a models.py file to actually create it for a user but we are just going to use the models that are inside django at least for right now right so i'm just going to write from uh, django again we are just going to use the same thing so i'm just going to copy this from here contrib.alt dot but this time we're going to be using models and i'm just going to import the user model and then over here we are going to create a class and we are just going to call it user registration uh, what should we call it user registration form and inside this we are just going to import all the functionality that this user creation form has so this is just the name and this is the functionality that we are inheriting from the django part and then inside this we are going to add an email field that we need so i'm just going to use our email and I have done this before, by the way, in Unopinion, so that's why I remember a lot of the code and I can actually see the code. Like, I don't know if I can show it to you guys, but yeah, I already have the code for this. So it, this should be pretty, pretty easy. All right. So yeah, we are just going to use our forms.email field and then inside this. So this will give, so if we were using the default version of user registration form, uh, then basically we, we won't be getting this email field if we were just using this user creation form directly, right? Then we won't be getting this email field. We'll just be getting the username and the password and the password one too. And we can also add other stuff to our uh, registration form. But for right now, I'm just gonna add an email field. And then inside this, I'm gonna add this class of meta. So this basically helps us add like, a, like extra fields if we want. So, and, and we also have to specify the model that we want to use. So I'm gonna use this user model that we imported. 
and then the fields. So this variable should be called fields and inside this brackets, let's use a square bracket. Inside this, we are going to tell whatever the fields that we need. We need the username, we need the email field that we created just now. So you can create your own fields if you had more variables over here. So this is basically we are using the model of user and we want to add this email field inside this model of user. That's why we are using this class of meta. And then obviously it requires password one and password two. So I'm just going to copy this baby from here and paste it again. Let's format everything properly. So this is our forms.py file. Pretty easy. All right. Uh, let's see what the chat is saying. Don't make custom user model. It takes time. Yeah, man. Um, so use this class. I mean, I think I use this one, right? It's pretty easy because uh, I had learned Django five months and because Django used the term models, I didn't know much about databases. Yeah, it uses like a lot of, uh, but I think all the frameworks kind of use the same term nowadays. So if you learn like spring framework, it also uses the term model from uh, like for uh, database and stuff. So my flatmate in Bangalore actually uses Spring. He is like an expert in Java. He should probably create a like YouTube channel like build with Java. But he's an expert in Java. So he also uses this models field in Spring framework. It's a basically Java based web development framework. So if you learn Django, you can actually learn like the framework of any kind of language. Is networking necessary from web hacking? Not really, but it helps. Search for Django widget tweaks. It will help you. I'll search it later. Let's just finish this sign up thing first and then we'll do like, let, let's actually, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to add this uh, inside my to-do list, like Google Keep. And after the stream, I'm uh, like, maybe during the stream, if we are able to create the sign up form in time, I'm going to look at all the things that people are asking me to do. So right now we have created this forms over here. It looks good. Now we need to add this form inside our views.py file and then we need to send this form to our uh, sign up form so we which we haven't created yet all right so we'll create this but let's first work on this uh, method of sign up right so we are going to go to our views.py file and first we're going to import this form that we have created over here so i'm just going to go up and we're going to write from forms from dot forms we are going to import our user registration form chill scenes chill scenes uh, then inside our sign up request, we are just going to create a variable of form and we are going to use our user registration form that we have created. All right. Um, and right now we just want to display this form, right? So we don't need to do, I think a lot of things to display this form. We are just going to use this form and uh, then we need to just send this form uh, to our uh, HTML page, right? Yeah, we don't need to do a lot of things right now. Let's just use this form. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, so let's render this first of all. So I'm just going to copy this, paste it over here and we are going to render our web page, but we don't have a web page sign up web page. So let's actually create it. So inside our my site app, we are going to create a new HTML file over here and I'm just going to call it sign up, press enter. And this is going to just uh, take stuff. Uh, this is. So what I'm going to do is inside a views.py file, I'm going to use, I'm going to write signup.html and then I'm going to send this form. So let's create this form uh, and actually we don't need to create or maybe we can, I guess we can just create a variable so that if we want to add more stuff to it, we can add stuff to it later. So we can just write form and then over here, we are just going to give it a value of form, put a comma and then just send the context over here looks good let's format everything properly go to our sign up page and just write forms variable over here and see how it looks first of all and then we can do like the other stuff later so let's just check what is happening so when we go to our sign up page it's going to check for this views of a sign up so it's going to go inside our views.py file it's going to come over here to our method of sign up it's going to check for a form that we imported from our uh, dot forms user registration form and let's open up our forms.py file and over here we have created a form which has an email field, a username field, a password on, password to field and then it basically sends this form to our uh, signup.html file and inside our signup.html file we are basically displaying this form. Alright, so this looks pretty good. Let's see if our server is running or not. Alright, our server is running. So now we can go and check our build with python website. Let's go to slash signup sign up 
slash and uh, nothing is being displayed perfect perfecto <coughs> let's see what we have not done over here so inside our register dot html i think we just required the form thing right uh, why is it not displaying it let's look at the source code does the form is there in the source code source code no it's not there oh it's form not forms that's my mistake sorry guys it's just form these mistakes if you don't catch them takes so much time to debug man it's so irritating but thankfully we caught it very very quickly all right so our form is being displayed it doesn't look good but at least it's being displayed uh i guess we can just use uh, this p tag and display them on separate lines so what we can also do is do something right as p right so this will basically display it on different lines i guess yeah so this is looking a lot more better we have our email we have a password and we have a password confirmation all right so this is this is a sign up form it doesn't look good i know guys but we'll make it look good so we have our sign up form and now our only only responsibility is to look make it look good right so we can just use the like the the forms um, the bootstrap right so first we also need uh, to implement this so that like it actually works right for example right now there is no submit button also so we need to add a submit button we also need to add a form tag so that this actually starts to work so what i'm going to do is over here i'm going to add a new form tag i'm going to add a method of post so we are going to send this via a post to our views.py file and let's paste this inside and uh, also it also will require a csrf token because no form works without a csrf token right and then we also need a submit button so i'm just going to create a submit button and what we're going to do actually is we are going to go to our optin.html and we are going to see where is our submit button let's copy this baby from here and paste it inside our signup.html paste this over here so now let's see how it looks all right so what we can also do to just to make it a little bit better is maybe use django crispy forms i think uh, this is a way to use i think bootstrap inside uh, uh crispy forms so this is basically a way to add bootstrap to our forms so currently this doesn't have bootstrap so if you want to have uh, bootstrap over here we need to use django crispy forms i think somebody in the chat said it before Django widget tweaks help you customize the form. Yeah, I guess we'll have a look at that later. Uh, Ventured crispy forms. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Django already has sign up URLs. Uh, uh, okay, I guess. All right. Uh, when will you get a Kiwi app database video? I don't think so anytime soon, man. Sorry about that. So let's go to our installation. Let's see how to install it. So we just do pip install Django crispy forms. So let's go to our file. And let's stop the server. So now let's go back to our settings and let's install the Django crispy forms. Avinash, 100 nice emoticons. So now uh, we are just being installing the Django crispy forms. So if you guys have any questions in the meanwhile, feel free to ask them. Umesh Chandra, hello, hello, man, hello, hello. Uh, yeah, so now we'll go to just our project, go to project interpreter, right, and click on this after it has loaded click over here and just search for django dash crispy what a nice name django crispy and this this one django crispy forms right yeah this is the one that we need or do we need this one ah this is unknown so i guess we'll install this one your camera is shaking ah damn sorry about that i think uh, my like my feet were tired so i was just moving them around uh all right so this is getting installed just while this is getting installed uh i'll just go and fill up my water in my glass so just wait for me guys Alright guys we are back hopefully you guys weren't lonely for too long 
So Django Crispy Forms has been installed. So we're just gonna click on OK and we'll wait for it to do stuff. Until then we are gonna see what else do we need to do. So we also need to add this to our installed underscore apps. Uh, this crispy underscore forms. Uh, MD, brother, may I know your name please? It's Atre. Like imagine your mom is bringing a tray. So your mom is bringing Atre. She's bringing basically me. <laughs> Shivam saying, hey, I loved your video series on Scrappy. Thank you for creating. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Glad it helped you. Bubble Trouble, I wonder how we'll tell him if he sees something firing up in the back. I think it's gonna fire up in the back. All right, so now it's installed. We need to add this to our settings.py file. And over here inside our uh, installed apps, we need to add our crispy forms, right? Let's format it properly. And then how do we add this inside our templates? Maybe go to filters. All right, so this is the thing that we need to add inside our form. So we're just gonna copy this, go to our sign up page, and why are we doing this thing when we what, what the heck am I doing? So we're basically gonna use our uh, this one base dot. We are not using our base template, right? So we can remove all of this extra stuff, not copy the content inside our uh, thing. So I'm just gonna paste paste this over here and remove this stuff. Copy our form inside our block content make it look good and uh, over here we can just add uh, a Django crispy thing so I'm gonna copy this from here load this one and add this uh, crispy thing over here instead of as p not dot so we'll remove the dot thing let's format it it's giving us an error so I don't know if it will work or not but let's give it a shot maybe it will work maybe it won't work let's run our server do you have any course about fast API? Not really, but I think uh, Django Flask and fast API are the like most used ones. All right, so let's see the moment of truth, whether it looks better or not. All right, so it's actually looking a lot better. Perfect, perfect. So we can also add a division tag over here. Uh, div class equals to container and uh, we can close this up over here. Then we can add a div tag of class equals to row. And inside this, we can add a div tag of class equals to col md12 because there's nothing right now inside our forms. And we can just copy our form from here to paste it over here. And because we want it to appear in the center, man, I'm becoming an expert in UI stuff. <laughs> we'll just paste it over here. Let's see how it looks. Uh, and then we need to also give it maybe like a space at the top so I'm just gonna write my4 all right uh, this I wanted to appear in the center but it's not apparently I'm not an expert I take it back all right so I guess it looks good uh, we can add like them in a card and everything but let's make sure that we implement all the functionality over here because right now if we do this stuff and click on submit nothing is gonna happen so we have to like kind of learn how to do that. So let's close all of this extra stuff now that we have implemented our um, thing. So we're also gonna change that. All right, so we have our sign up page over here, but we need to implement the functionality that's going on behind the scenes, right? So what happens when we click on the submit button? Uh, where is our form? Did I remove a form? Okay, here's the form. So we also need to give it action as to tell it to where to go. So action, we are just gonna write our URL where it, where we want it to go. And we want it to go to our URL. And uh, let's see how we did the URL. Okay, this is the one. And just inside single quotes, we write the name of where we want it to go. Uh, so what we are gonna do is, we are just gonna write URL space and let's make it go to our sign up page too, right? So inside our urls.py file, there should be a sign name. All right, perfect. Uh, let's look at this again. So, all right, so this is going to use this post method and whenever the submit button is clicked, it's gonna go to our sign up. So inside our views.py file over here, yeah, I need an action URL, I just put that. Now inside our views.py file, what we are gonna do, we first need to check when it's a post request, right? Just like we did over here. So we can just copy in from our opt-in thing. And we can just write if request dot method it was post, then we need to do all this stuff, right? 
and actually this uh, should be done when there is a get request right so let me not do everything over here and um, wait a sec so this is this is a get request so let's just write else over here and return all of this stuff if it's just a simple get request but if it's a post request wait why is it giving us an error oh because there's nothing in f probably so yeah if it's a the post request then we are going to use the same form but over here we are just going to write request dot post and this will get the contents of the post requests for example the username the email the passwords and everything and it's going to go inside this form variable and now we are just going to check whether the form is valid or not so this validity is done by django itself and we don't have to worry about it so we're just going to write form is valid and if the form is valid if everything if all the valued enters entered are correct then we are going to save this inside a database we are just going to write form dot save and then we are just going to write user equals to uh, sorry username equals to because we want to get like just for checking purposes i'm going to print this out on the screen or something uh, we are just going to write form dot cleaned underscore data and this will also help us when we are doing the login and stuff right uh, form dot uh, clean dot data dot get username all right and this should be inside single quotes and this value this this uh, this is basically a string that the django this forms that we have inside our sign up.html is automatically sending us so we don't have to worry about it we just have to write the username over here and uh, i think we can also do a redirect i guess uh let's do a redirect so over here at the top we also have to import um, the redirect so we want it to redirect to some other page after the sign up has been done right so we can just print first of all this username out and what we can also do is we can use this redirect to and uh, we just need to add the name of our uh, page that is inside our urls.py so what we can do is we can just redirect it to our uh, courses page after sign up so we can just write uh, the courses over here let's add them inside single quotes and i think that's pretty much it guys what do you guys think do you guys think it will work or uh, it won't work Right. I'm going to remove uh, the spam over here. Whew. All right. That was a lot of coding for very, very quickly. Uh, provide class colmd-5 mx auto. Uh, all right. Let's actually do that inside of sign up one. We are just going to use five instead of 12 and see how it work looks. All right. So let's go back. All right. This works, but I think it's too small. So maybe make it a little bit, make a little bit more bigger. And then do do the MX Auto thing. Yeah, I guess this looks fine. But I think the previous one was looking better a little bit. We'll figure out the thing, uh, how to make it look good a little bit later. For right now, we just want to implement the functionality. And hopefully, like what we have done inside our views.py file. So if it's a post request, it's going to get the data of a form. Right? And it will gonna check whether the form is valid or not. If it's valid, it's going to save our form. And then it's gonna use our username, uh, get our username after cleaning it, and it's gonna print it on our screen, and it's gonna redirect it to courses page. All right, so the moment of truth, guys, and it should also come over here, right? I think in the user section, it should also come. So right now it's only me, it's very uh, lonely. So it should also come inside our user section automatically. So let's check it out. So first username we are gonna write is uh, let's use my home name Taru. And I'm just going to use my email, but Atreya, gmail.com. The password, I'm just going to keep it as uh, build. Okay, you, your, your password can't be, okay, so I have to use all this stuff. This stuff. Um, so let's just call it uh, build something we'll remember, build with at the rate one, two, three, right? Hopefully I don't mess up the spelling build with add rate one two three all right let's see if it works so now we have clicked on the submit button and it doesn't work the view my side views dot sign up didn't return an http response object it returned none instead where is it this was the password where is the error give me the error mm. The view dot my view dot sign up didn't return an HTTP object return none instead. 
Did it actually get saved though inside the users? All right, it got saved, but it's giving us an error because I think uh, we are not, uh, but this redirect should work, right? We don't have to render this page. This should redirect. Scale of 0 to 10 where you will rate yourself at Django, I'm very very bad at it. You can see like I'm, so I haven't touched Django in 2-3 years. So that's why when I came back, I was like, uh, it's gonna be a challenge. That's why I take the help of chat uh, and figure all this stuff out, you know. So I think I'll rate myself as like a 3-4, probably below average or something. But I like I can get stuff done very very easily. So because I know how coding works and I know how to debug my problems. so. You are saving and then getting the username. First get username and then save the form. All right, let's give that a shot. Uh, I don't think that should be the problem, but we'll give it a shot. I really don't think that should be the problem. Form dot clean. Why would it be a problem? No, that I don't think that's the error, man. Are you? I don't really think that's the error. So the form is getting saved. So over here, I think don't think there is a problem, right? So username form dot cleaned underscore data dot get username. This should also work. Is that username getting printed by the way? Let's see. Taru. Okay. So our, our username is working because it's getting printed, right? I think there's a problem over here. So you know what we are going to do is we are just going to for right now, we are just going to render our courses dot HTML and see if that is not giving us an error, right? So let's return render and over here you can see that instead of sign up.html we are just going to render our courses.html and we'll know whether the like where the error is right or we can also use the debug mode I guess but uh, I think this should also work all right so let's give it a shot again uh, let's go to our sign up page press enter and this time let's choose someone from our live stream return redirect source did i mess up the spelling i don't think i missed return oh it was a uh, read oh oh man i suck i suck we have to return this man i suck <laughs> suck so bad <laughs> we have to return this i didn't return it thank you man uh msa clutch you are you're coming in clutch man you're coming in clutch how did i forget the return statement but anyways all right so this should work all right, let's because the MSA clutch has told us what the error is. So we are going to use MSA clutch over here. Yeah, I'm going to take his username clutch. What's the spelling? MSA C L U T C H T C H. Right. And YouTube, I guess he has a YouTube channel. And then uh, we are going to use uh, something very, very simple. MSA at the rate gmail.com. And then we are just going to copy his username exactly and paste it as a password click on submit it's still giving us an error man do we need to restart the server maybe we need to restart the server return an HTML return non instead courses I, I was really sure that was the problem but I guess it's not courses use return yeah that's what i did now return redirect right is it courses or is it just a course no it's courses so i'm doing it right so let's actually restart our server because sometimes you need to re just django works weirdly sometimes you just need to restart the server and the error is gone so let's just retard restart the server and then see what's up let's just do reload continue uh now i'm just gonna put in random stuff whatever dot com password whatever whatever i don't care oh shit password we have to actually put in something let me just copy this let's see if we can just copy and paste this from here click on submit yeah it's not working return redirect a function instead mm, what function though let's just use our render thing and see if that works all right, so let's remove this context and instead of sign up, let's just use courses and we'll figure out the redirect thing, but let's just see if this works or not. All right, so let's reload this one. 
Okay, it's still giving us an error. So maybe the error is not there uh, in the redirect thing, right? Put function name instead of name of URL. You mean the views name? Oh, so don't call it. Uh, okay, so you mean okay? I got what you mean. So you mean uh, basically put this? Yeah, but that's what it is. The method name is courses, right? So I don't think that should be a problem. I'm putting the function name instead of the name of the URL. This is courses. I have always used the redirect on a URL than a name. Really? But I don't think the problem, guys, I don't think the problem is on, uh, I think we are kind of deviating. I don't think the problem is on the redirect. I think the redirect is working fine. Uh, where is our uh, sign up over here? So I think this, uh, because this is also not working, right? This should at least work. Because we are just returning, uh, we, we are just rendering the page. So this should work. But the view, okay, let's actually Google this man, whatever. Let's just Google this error and see what comes up on Google. And maybe we can just uh, figure it out somehow. I think we also need to add uh, GitHub, uh, sorry, Django at the last. See intendation. The intendation is fine. If request on a post, if form is valid. Yeah, I guess what we can, I mean, I don't think it should be a problem, but I guess we can also try this one out. Continue. Oh, it's actually worked. Or did it? My site courses.html. I think it worked, guys. Yeah, so now I think the problem was with the intendation, I guess. So we can just redirect it now and put it as courses. And for the final time, let's try it out. Maybe this will work. Or did it work? I'm not sure. All right. Mm, random stuff, paste, paste, sign up. Yeah, guys, that is working. Perfect. Who who was the... Obviously, it's Ayush Patel. Man, this, this guy is a legend. All right, so guys, that is that is actually working. So the problem was not with redirect. I think the problem was in, with intendation. So basically, I think the problem was if what if the form wasn't valid? So basically, Django was saying if the form is not valid, then what I'm supposed to do, right? So we, we can put a render over here also, but uh, so basically, we need to return... Wait, wait a sec. So we are going to return this over here. If the form is valid, then we are going to go send it to sign up uh, the courses page. But if it is not valid, then we are just going to send it to uh, the sign up page, right? Uh, thank you guys for the help. I, a lot of good uh, inputs coming in. Uh, use Django all auth instead. It's really easy to implement by pressure. Someone is already done a simple way. Uh, and it worked. I, I think name works, man. Uh, I just tried it out. Name works. I don't think that's a problem. The intendation was a problem. Yeah. Uh, Mohammed Irfan, hi. Hey, man. How are you? Rohit, hey, man. How are you? Sorry, I'm late. No worries. No worries. No worries, Rohit. All right. Uh, so I think that is what we are going to do. And now let's try it out. Uh, wait a minute. Is it not getting saved? Uh, what? Yeah, it's not getting saved now. Hmm. Interesting. All right, let's try it on one more time. Maybe there was some kind of an error. All right, let's try it out again. Uh, let's try it with MSA Clash because I don't think that also got saved inside our form, right? Only the first one got saved. Let's use one of the emails, MSA Clash at the rate uh, gmail.com. Let's, let's make it good this time. Maybe there was some kind of problem over here. And then inside the password, we are just gonna put in the same thing, build, uh, with at the rate let me just write it again build with at the rate one two three and over here also build with at the rate one two three click on submit 
and they should take us to a courses page and over here the msh clutch should come in yeah it is so probably what happened was because we are just entering like trash data that's why it didn't work and so what we need to do is if there is an error in the form of some kind then we need to actually tell the user that hey the uh, the password that you enter is maybe too similar to your personal information uh, because that was what probably was happening i was just copying and pasting the email as the password so we need to tell the user that your password is too similar to the personal information and stuff like that and uh, if there's an error then it just goes to the same page and if there is not an error then it goes to the sign up all right so now we are actually saving obviously there are some errors but we are actually saving it to our uh, database so guys uh, it has been one and a half hours today so what i'm gonna do inside our uh, planning.md is this we are gonna do tomorrow by the way okay so i'm just gonna add over here uh make make the if the form is not valid use render yeah i guess that makes sense uh, we'll do that tomorrow make the first of all make the sign up page look better ninth uh, if i guess this can be added inside sign up page only make the sign up page look better and uh, handle the this we are going to do tomorrow by the way guys because we want the sign up page to be complete handle the errors uh, handle the form validation thingy right uh, if form errors i guess we can just try this out for quickly doing it i guess we can try it out quickly uh, i guess we'll try it out tomorrow msa clutch i think this is really really good so we are going to just try it out tomorrow so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to copy all of this stuff and uh, i'm going to paste it inside my uh, planning.md so that i remember that we have to do this right so let me just copy this and we're going to paste it over here we have to try this thing out if form.errors i think it's the only uh, important part this is not needed right handle the form validation thingy so if there are errors we are just gonna kind of display it i guess um, like if there are errors then we are gonna handle it somehow and what else uh, yeah if the form is val if not valid then use the errors thing and and use the render thing which i use said so we are also gonna do that and then tomorrow maybe we can also uh, make the login page right because that's the next step so currently our form if everything is entered correctly is getting saved to our users page but everything is not getting correctly then we need to show that everything is not getting entered correctly and we need to render it and show it somehow that it's not it's not uh, right and we need to also add this to a card or something because right now it just looks uh, it's, it's just there <sighs> all right guys uh, thank you so much for joining render the sign up page uh, some people are watching ipl and here we are doing live streaming and coding we are okay with these yeah man coding is fun uh, like the thing with like at the end of the day like you can watch ipl it's fun so after this stream you can go and watch ipl do some stuff but every day you have to like do something productive right you have to keep on learning so even i am learning every day like python and like coding and development is such a huge field and similarly in our field if you want to become a developer things are changing so quickly things are changing so quickly imagine like we are using 3.1 currently of django and it will change so quickly django new versions are coming python new versions are coming so you have to like be on like uh, the cutting edge of what's happening you have to keep on learning right so every day you have to at least spend some time on learning spend some time on creating projects and do some work on your own if you are doing a job and stuff do your work and you can watch uh, like some stuff at the work itself like the ipl <laughs> the code is single youtube doesn't allow me to text more than 200 words and true parts yeah yeah thank you man msa clutch uh, we are going to try that but i i got what you're trying to do so i just copied the if form errors part because i got what you are trying to do so i don't think uh, it's going to be a problem now actually i'm also going to copy this thing form and errors and then use the variable of form errors uh, all right guys so this is pretty much if for this stream if you haven't liked the stream please please uh, bro use crispy bro i have used crispy you can see crispy form stack so guys this is pretty much it have you tried vim editor uh it's my favorite i haven't but i don't think it's that user friendly man timing of tomorrow we are going to be live at eight o'clock tomorrow 8 p.m so yeah guys this is pretty much it take care of yourself have a good night uh have some fun 
and i'll see you tomorrow for another learning session peace out guys peace out good night good night